Greetings people, it's Jared here, Wolfgang1, back to do uh, another video. It's been a while since I did a video, again, about another two or three weeks. I can't remember what the last thing I was that I put up. Um, so today we're, um, we're doing something uh, a little bit new and a little bit familiar at the same time. Because it's been a while since I've done one of these. Okay, so welcome to this, such as it is, right? Season 3, episode 4 of Wolf King One Strange Corner. Thank you very much. Please take a seat. This is going to take a while. And uh, again, as I said in my last couple of videos, is what qualifies a strange corner. It's got to be something particularly odd, particularly strange. And I barely got away with the first episode, or was it the second episode of this uh, third series, by instead of saying things that were weird, just having a complete rant about a particularly bad day that I'd had. It doesn't really qualify, but there we are. Uh, so, but this, um, I think, I think this, this particular story possibly falls into uh, either category, really. Um, and, and this is work-related. And I'm going to take you back, um, not so far in the midst of times I have done in the past, um, but I'm going to take you back to, uh, when was it? Oh, I can, now I've got to think about it. Um, would have been November, possibly. Uh, yeah, some, sometime in November last year. Uh, um, as you all are painfully, painfully aware, I work in supported housing um, in the homeless sector. And uh, from the 20th of September 2016 to the, I think, the 20-something or whatever um, of November 2018, um, I was uh, involved in housing management. So I dealt with, this, this, you can tell this is going to be a really interesting story, um, I, I dealt with things like rents, repairs, renewals, uh, liaising with landlords, contractors, um, local authority, over housing benefit claims, and all, all the really boring behind the scenes back office kind of shit that, that allowed, allowed the project to function on a day to day basis. On occasion, I have also run the place in the absence of any kind of management or anything like that, and only because I've been there for like the last 150 years. And I know the place like the like the back of my uh, back of my hand, which believe me, I know very, very well. And um, I went from support worker to housing management worker because management at the time sussed out that I was getting more and more pissed off with support work, and my general cheery attitude just wasn't cutting it anymore. Um, so I, I went into housing, and one of the first things I did as housing management worker was evict two fucking idiots um, via bailiff. For a combined total of thirteen and a half thousand pound rent arrears, that was a fucking good day, ladies and gentlemen, because I had that coming. Anyway, I do this job. I do this job for about two years, and you know, I'm I'm a hell of a lot better of it than I was ever was a support worker. And then the powers that be decided that they were going to have a, a restructure of the um, of the services, and they had four housing management workers, and they got rid of one. Uh, for massive, massive misconduct issues. Um, but then again, he was also a massive dickhead, right? Uh, so they're down to three ma housing management workers uh, for four clusters. And my building, because it has the highest number of rooms, counted as its own separate cluster. Um, so they've got have three housing management workers. So they're doing this big restructure, and um, they decided what they wanted was instead two housing management workers uh, for the... 150 odd beds that they run in in the area um and as i was on secondment and not a full-time position my job was coming to an end and they were going to put me back to being a support worker and i argued the case that you know i've been in the role for two years you would think really that it's no longer a case of being on secondment that is actually my job role and um, they disagreed because uh, my company um are fucking useless and um they're going to put me back down to being a support worker with all the uh, rights and responsibilities there, which basically involved a grand and a half pay cut, <clears throat> which they saw nothing wrong with. Um, so I, I was looking at my options and I decided to apply for a new role that they were creating of the senior worker. The senior worker is basically uh, a support worker with more responsibility and uh, a little bit more pay, but not much. So I thought, all right, I'll go for that. And um, I didn't get it. I had my interview and I didn't get it. Um, and then we had, a, we had a team meeting and the manager at the time, who was this, 
She's a nice enough woman outside of the office environment, but inside the office environment, she doesn't listen to a word you say. She's a fucking plum. Um, bless her. And uh, we had a team meeting and they've decided who's going to be the, uh, the senior worker. And in this one particular team meeting, they, uh, everybody's mouth literally hit the fucking desk when she turned around and said, uh, we, we've selected the, uh, the uh, senior workers by one who's been successful. Uh, those who have been uh, successful have been notified. Uh, she said, Gerard went for the position, um, but he was unsuccessful. But then again, he didn't want it anyway, so it doesn't matter. And everybody went into a bit of a stunned silence. And I turned around to her and I said, you what, love? And she said, well, I'm not, I'm not going to retract that statement. Your, your interview was very poor and you wasn't trying. I was like, right, okay. I said, so it wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that um, I worked eight days on the trot because you couldn't be bothered to find cover for your project. I said, and when the day that I had my interview was my ninth day out of a row to 13, I said, and I was tired. It had nothing to do with that at all. It has everything to do with the fact that um, I decided to waste my and everybody else's time by actually applying and going for the interview. I said, fair enough. Fine. Now, what I could have done at that stage was um, made a complaint to HR um, and had it done for, um, uh, what do they call it, institutional bullying. Um, but I couldn't be bothered to put the effort in. Um, and it's a shame because a couple of weeks before that, we had to fill out a staff survey. Uh, and one of the staff surveys was, uh, one of the questions was, have you come across any uh, institutional bullying in your job? And at the time, rightly so, I put down, no, I thought if that fucking survey had come out just a couple of weeks after, I'd have put down, absolutely I have done. But that's a totally separate thing, it's not important. So, um, so they're still going to put me down to being a, uh, a support worker. And then the same job came up again uh, in a different area of London, in, in North London. And the North London version of the role was paying, uh, what was it? five grand more than what I was getting um, because obviously North London local authorities pay more for their uh, support housing services than uh, South London does but there we are and so I applied for it and uh, I went down for the interview and the interview wasn't a series of questions like uh, how would you prioritize your workload when you've got like three apples and one of them is a tomato and you know, the place is on fire and that sort of shit because that sort of shit is just ridiculous my interview mostly consisted of uh, what's your current experience, what's your past experience, um, and why do you want the job? And when it came to that last question, I said, because I want to get out of my local place uh, because it's doing my head in. And instead of asking all these really ridiculous questions, they turned around and said, we'd like to offer you the job. I said, well, I'd like to take it. That works out pretty well for everyone, doesn't it? So I took this job as a senior worker on five grand a year more than what I'm getting. Six months to come, um, but I was taking over from somebody who uh, was uh, on long-term sick, and I was told at the time, um, it's really, really long-term sick. Uh, chances are they're not coming back. This secondment role is probably going to go permanent. So I was like, okay. I said, well, let's see what happens. And uh, by saying that one simple thing, I can't help but that was me subconsciously hammering the nail into the coffin of my own career. Um, so I, I started off as, as a senior worker for, the, for this new team um, with all the rights and responsibilities thereof. And it did not go according to plan, ladies and gentlemen, let's be honest with that. Um, I was going into a team that was already quite closely, well, close-knit and they work really well together. You can't take that away from them, really. What you can take away from them is the fact that there were a few undesirable elements i.e. the housing management worker who knew nothing about housing management and wasn't interested in doing anything remotely connected to housing management uh, unless you asked her a question and she'd turn around and say, um, I'm not interested in that. I'm like, well, okay, it's part of your job role, you should be, and I know how to do your job role, um, but I'm not going to get into that protracted argument with you. Um, it was... Uh, how, can I, how can I put this? I'm trying to think how this, how this all, how all started. One of the, one of the things that um, didn't... Uh, warned me to them right away was the fact that my manager went on a uh, two weeks holiday for Christmas and then an extra week's holiday sick after that and I noticed that that was a habit that she made um, that she had consistently whenever she went on leave um, because there were certain pieces of paperwork that apparently I was supposed to do that never got sent to uh, the local authority and the social services teams and things like that now fair enough that's my mistake I should have done that however 
you could also put the blame on the my manager's shoulders there because she didn't induct me into those processes and nobody told me these are the things you have to do in her absence. So I had a supervision with her and uh, she turned around and said, oh, uh, blah, blah, well, I'm not happy with the way you're performing. I said, fair enough then, give me a list of things to do and I'll, I'll pick up on those. And I did, I did every single thing on time. All these documents went off. A couple of days before they're supposed to, so they've got the information, blah, blah, blah. I, I was, I, I thought doing that a hell of a lot better. And uh, whilst also combating the fact that the housing management worker, while I'm sitting in the same room as her, would then turn around and say to the manager, oh, I miss Amanda. Have you heard from Amanda? When's Amanda coming back? And I'm thinking, I'm sitting right here, you arsehole, and I'm doing Amanda's job. I dare say Amanda was fucking brilliant. I dare say Amanda could do the job standing on the red more than I could. At this point, however, right, I'm getting sick of hearing Amanda's name and I'm hoping that whatever she's got fucking kills her, right? Because I'm getting more and more pissed off. And it's it's horrible to wish that kind of uh, ill on someone. But if they're that deathly ill anyway, then basically fewer days ahead than they are behind as far as I'm concerned. So my manager um, then gives me another supervision just before she's about to go on three weeks leave to the Caribbean, of which when she came back, she also had an extra week off sick after that. And she turned around to me and said, um, I'm still not happy with the way that you're performing. I don't want to leave my project in your hands while I'm away. I said, well, that's unfortunate. I said, because you hired me as the senior worker, i.e. your deputy manager. I said, so um, I'm going to be doing your job while I'm away. She goes, no, I'm going to get somebody else to manage the hostel um, while I'm gone. I said, right, so what am I doing then? I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm being a support worker. I'm a considerably higher wage than a support worker dealing with... Uh, three or four social services kids. Not really what I signed up for, but let, let's ignore that. And uh, we came out of supervision. I was a little bit dejected. She said, I'm going to send you back to your old place because it's not working out. Even though you've given me no guidance, no supervision, you haven't taken the opportunity to sit down when I said, maybe you and I could or coordinate a plan for attack, how we want things to work, how we want things to develop. You've done none of that. Um, but you, you sat there looking like a chinless wonder uh, instead with a smug smug look on your face I, I wouldn't personally have been smug with her you know but especially as she kept wearing that wig at a jaunty angle bless her didn't have the heart to tell her that um and uh yes it's this continuously protracted feeling of being uh not welcome not appreciated not uh not not sort of like brought into the team properly always kept at arm's length and then be the first one to blame if anything goes horribly wrong um and it was getting more and more and more and more painful. Uh, and uh, one day I, I said to my manager, um, I've not seen any emails recently. I said from the local authority inviting us to when, when the next uh, gangs meeting is or when the next uh, this, that or the other is. And my manager turned around in front of the whole staff team and said, oh yeah, I've not been forwarding those to you because I don't want you to get too invested in it. And I said, right, okay. I said, so what in fact you're saying there is, you are prohibiting me now from actually doing the role that you employed me to do because you don't you don't like me. I said, is, I said so what am I doing here? What am I travelling an hour, sometimes more, on a day-to-day -day basis for if you, all you're going to do is have me sit here and be a support worker? I, I could have done that back in, uh, back in Greenwich. Um, so she said, will you come out with me and have a cigarette? I was like, oh, yeah, okay. So I followed her up and she said, look, she goes, it's not you personally. I said, I'm starting to think it is me personally. I said, well, there's something about me you don't like. She goes, we just don't think it's working out. I said, hang on, who do you mean we? Who's we? She goes, well, I've had a discussion with the staff team. I said, really? I said, so have I. I said, when I do their supervisions, I said, I've asked them, how, how you find working with me as I'm the new member of the team? Is there anything you'd like me to pick up on? Is there anything you'd like me to uh, develop? Blah, blah, blah. And they've all turned around and went, no, no, it's fine. So who who is the we? I tell you who the we is. It's you, and your uh, and your housing management worker who doesn't like doing housing management work. So they've decided categorically that my secondment is going to come to an end at the end of the six months, and I'm going to go back to Greenwich uh, as just a support worker, a role that I've not done now for three, uh, two and a half years or whatever. Um, I'm going to go back to being a support worker um, on five grand a year less than what I'm earning, just as and this is brilliant because they knew what my timetable was and everything like that. They decided to change my job and cut my wage by five grand just as I was about to sign the tenancy agreement to move in with my partner at the beginning of June. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, I can't help feel, you might be wrong, I might be wrong about this, you may disagree, but I can't help feel that is a 
systematic, coordinated, vicious, fucking, purposeful kick in the bollocks. Right? So I decided to have a little bit of fun on my last day. And one of the things we had a continuing issue with was the uh, IT or the, or the lack of uh, working IT equipment. And I sat there one day opposite the housing management worker. My computer wasn't working. And I turned around and went, oh, for fuck's sake. And she turned around and went, did you just swear again? I said, yes. I said, have you noticed any time over the last six months? I said, whenever somebody swears opposite the desk opposite you, I said, it's me. I said, because that's where I sit. And it's always a male voice. And she said, you need to put a pound in the swear jar. I went, what, that, that swear jar that you just made up? I said, to try and con some money out of me. I said, no. I said, I'm not doing that. And she goes, you need to put a pound in the swear jar. I went, oh, fuck that. And she went, are you doing this on purpose? I went, yes, I'm doing this on purpose. Of course I'm doing this on purpose. I said, I'll tell you what, here's a penny. And she went, no, no, it, it's a pound. It's a pound. I said, well, if you look after the pennies, the pounds take care of themselves, don't they? I said, after a while, you'll have enough to buy a whisper. And she said, uh, because obviously she was, she was, a, she was a, a God-fearing woman uh, with little to no sense of humour, um, she turned around and said, well, maybe you need divine intervention. <clears throat> I said, yeah. I said, I'm 39 years old. I said, I think I'm a little bit long in the for divine intervention. I said, I think if anything, I said, that would have come when I really needed it. I said, back when I was a teenager and got myself into a very stupid situation, I thought, well, maybe all the times I got the shit kicked out of me at school, I said, at a Catholic school, I said, where well, weirdly enough, there was no evidence of divine intervention. I said, Dan, I said, what about you? I said, I mean, do you never, uh, I said, do you never get yourself into a bit of a pickle at work or get so frustrated where you feel you need divine intervention? And no word of a lie, this woman, bless her, turned around and said, I do not need divine intervention. I'm an instrument of God. I said, an instrument of God. I said, an instrument, uh, something that, that can be used to fulfil a purpose. I said, uh, uh, oh, I said, uh, a bit like a tool then. And she turned around and went, that's right, I'm a tool. And I went, yeah, yeah, you are, yeah, brilliant. And uh, I didn't really have to work for that one. I didn't really have to set it up in any particular way. It's just, I was just lucky enough that the fact that the conversation flowed so beautifully to trap her into saying something absolutely derogatory about herself without her realising it. As I said, no sense of humour. So I walked out of there on my last day um, smug as fucking arseholes, which was, which was brilliant, which sadly enough was cruelly taken away from me the following day when I went back to my old scheme uh, and then, uh, yeah, ended up being a support worker again. Interestingly enough, on that role, I actually applied to be the senior worker again in Greenwich. Didn't even get an interview that time. Um... And the woman that I was taking over from uh, turned out that she's the one who won the role of the senior worker and she'd only been there properly as a member of staff for a week. And it transpires from my colleagues that when I spoke to them um, that she's absolutely beyond fucking useless as, as a support worker and yet somehow they gave her the senior worker role and by the staff team's own admission they must have been scraping the bottom of a particularly empty barrel to give her the role of a uh, senior worker. So that made me feel better about myself. Um, yeah, and there was one other thing I wanted to tell you about this whole Kankapsi story. Uh, oh yes, just as I'm getting ready to leave North London and travel back to South London for a role that I have no interest in, I still don't have any interest in, weirdly enough, um, the staff team was already down anyway. There was down a couple of members of staff that they never recruited for. And then I'm about to leave. And I gave my manager the option. I said, look, I said, you're understaffed as it is. I said, you can always extend this comment if you want. She ignored that. Um, she granted uh, three weeks leave to one of the support workers because uh, because of a religious uh, sort of festival thing they were just coming out of. And they wanted some time off. Um, which was fine. And 20 minutes after she uh, granted this leave to this gentleman, um, we realised that one of the other support workers hasn't turned up and no one can get hold of them on their phone. Everyone's panicking a little bit. So after an hour or so, uh, they uh, they managed to get hold of this woman. And they said, where are you? And she went, I'm in Jamaica. And they went, what are you doing in Jamaica? She went, oh, I had a family emergency uh, and, I, and I just had to leave. And they went, all right, how long are you going to be gone for? She went, I don't know, three, maybe four weeks, I'm not sure yet. Um, which everybody knew of the family emergency. They thought perhaps her mum might be on the way out, but that's been going on for months. 
Um, and she kept saying, well, I might need to book leave soon. I might need to book leave soon for Jamaica, blah, blah. And the manager, quite rightly so, turned around and said, um, just let us know when that is and we can arrange it. And she didn't. And I said, oh, what? I said, I'd be very surprised if the poor girl has a job for four weeks' time. And a couple of hours later, my manager turned around to me and said, um, realised that she's now going to be about three or four people down, turned around to me and said, um, oh, you, you, you will be missed here, you know, you'll be very much missed. I said, really? I said, because... I was under the impression, I said, the impression that you gave me over the course of the last four very, very torturous and painful, long, drawn-out months, I said that if there was one thing that I would not be in this project, I said, it's missed by anyone or anything. I said, so, thank you, uh, thank you for the words of encouragement. I said, uh, thank you for uh, the genuine, heartfelt statement you just made. I said, but I died, I'm, I'm not, I'm still not entirely convinced. You should, oh, no, no, you, you've, uh, you've made friends here in the staff team. You'll have to let us know how you get on in Greenwich. I went, yeah. I said, I'm sure, I'm sure that will uh, brighten your day up, you know, massively. So, I, I guess, I guess the moral of this story is, uh, I, 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 I guess, really, it all boils down to the fact that I've, I've, because I much prefer being uh, on a permanent contract as opposed to like sort of temporary or temporary to permanent or thing like that, I've I've continuously shot myself in the foot over the course of the last few years by uh, not taking the initiative and getting another job um, because it's a lot easier to stay somewhere where I have a permanent contract, even though time and time again I have been bent over and viciously fisted by uh, my company, who thankfully no longer run my project. It's somebody else now. So I dare say there will be... Uh, a whole new um, corporate fisting program being initiated by them. We, sh we shall see how that works out. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Uh, thank you very much for watching this, such as it was. I'm not entirely sure how entertaining this was. Um, season three, episode four of Wolf King One Strange Corner. Um, I just thought I'd get this out there because I've had people come up to me at the convention saying, "When are you put out another Strange Corner?" Well, here it is. It's probably not my best, but there, yeah, enjoy it. Um, I will be back at some point soon with a review and some other shit that I'm doing. Um, I'm still working on that bloody comic. Hit a bit of a snag with that. But I'm trying. Um, it will basically happen when it happens. So, um, yeah. That's basically the way that I treat all my videos these days. So, thanks very much for watching this. I'll be back at some point soon. As always, you've been lovely and tolerant. And uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Until then, take care.